Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hari, and this is Esan. And uh, our project title is uh, Visual Question Answering Using Transformers, and uh, we are from Lynch Ripping University. Uh, so in this presentation, uh, we split it into two parts. Firstly, we will I will give a brief overview about uh, a, to a project, what we did and uh, what kind of solution we tried to implement. And then Esan will walk you through more details about the implementation and how we use this uh, distributed data parallel to solve this problem. So firstly, uh, visual question answering is the task of understanding a given image and answering questions posed in natural language based on the contents of the image. This is a challenging task as it requires reasoning about two different data modalities, in this case, text and image, uh, and you have to do this in conjunction. An additional challenge is to generate an answer to the question in natural language. Such a system enables multimodal interaction between humans and machines, and also another useful application is uh, in assistive technologies for uh, visually challenged individuals. A general framework to solve this task involves the following steps. Image feature extraction, question feature extraction, and here feature extraction means taking this raw image or text and producing like a feature vector, uh, which is a set of numbers. And then another module relating, relating or combining these image and question features, and finally answer generation. However, for this project, uh, we simplify this problem by only considering yes or no type questions. This removes the need to uh, train an answer generation model. And also the VQA task can be simply posed as a binary classification problem. So we just have these uh, three steps, image feature extraction, question feature extraction, and then the classifier to predict yes or no answer. Here, the classifier actually performs the task of relating the image and the question to predict the most appropriate answer. A mathematical formulation of the task is as follows. Given an image X, a question Q, and answer A, which is 0 or 1, 1 if it is yes, and 0 if it is no. Uh, then the task is to learn a model, uh, in this case, this function F, with the parameters theta, which are the model parameters. For this task, we use the VQA V1 dataset, which is a dataset introduced at this CVPR conference in 2016. And this is commonly used as a standard uh, benchmark data set for this task. Um, this data set uses selected images from this COCO data set, which is a large uh, object detection data set. And each image can have multiple uh, related questions. And also to notice that this COCO data set contains more complex images where there are multiple objects in each image and also different uh, scenarios. So we pick the subset of the data set that contains uh, only yes or no type questions. So then we obtain a smaller data set which contains uh, around 63,000 training images and 30,000 validation images. And in total, there are around 95,000 questions in the training set and around 45,000 45, questions in the validation set. Below, we will uh, visualize some examples from this training set. So, we had first downloaded uh, the, all this data and the entire data set uh, from different URLs. And uh, here we just have this data set class to uh, load this data set. And uh, here we have some examples that are visualized on this data set. So in this case, we have some image and it has, say in this case, it has this chair. So we have a question, is there a shadow? And the correct answer is yes, because there's some shadow here. So it can be about some uh, aspect of this image, which is not an object. And there are also some questions which are re directly related to objects. In this case, like, are there any water skiers in this picture? So that is directly about whether this particular object is present or not. And also it can be about some object, which is uh, maybe not the prominent object in the image. Like in this case, are there trees visible? Yes, there are trees in the background, but uh, that is maybe not the prominent object in this image. And there are also some other questions which are more related to some higher order reasoning. Uh, like in this case, is the elephant wet? And uh, this is maybe a bit difficult to say just uh, based on the elephant in this case. So then our solution idea is as follows. Um, we have these three steps that I explained before. Uh, 
one thing that we do is that uh, this model f we break it down into uh, in this fashion where we have this function h which operates on these features which are extracted from the image and the question so in this case gv of h is the visual feature extractor and gl of q is the text feature at question feature extractor so these two are basically vectors now and then this function h uh, tries to relate different uh, properties of aspects in these vectors to produce this output P, which is the probability of the answer being yes, given uh, this image edge and question Q. Um, and also inspired by the recent advances in transformers in both uh, vision and language applications, we use the transformer architectures to extract both the image and text features. Particularly self-supervised learning on large unlabeled data sets have been shown to be really promising when you want to transfer the learned model to new tasks. Sometimes they still supervised representations also surpass fully supervised training on the specific task, especially when limited amount of label data is available. So we choose to use publicly available pre-trained models. Uh, for the image feature extractor, we use the small vision transformer, which is pre-trained on dino self supervised learning method. For the text feature extractor, uh, we use this Albert model, which is a computationally efficient version of BERT. Uh, so the transformer feature extractors output a set of features for each pair of question and image. And these feature extractors themselves are kept frozen and are not trained. Then we just add a small interaction module that combines these image and text features and then produces the output. So here we have a flow chart showing uh, how our model works. So we have this image and the question which we uh, then we use these transformer feature extractors to get these uh, vectors for the image and the question. And in this case, a CLS one is the overall representation and these other smaller things like vectors are the patch level representation in images and in text it's basically the representation for each word, for example. And then we have this, trans this uh, transformer-based feature fusion model module, which uh, combines or relates features from both these uh, extracted, both these features. And uh, then we have a simple MLP to get the final output. So we just have this more extra module that is trainable. All these transformers are uh, kept frozen and are not trained uh, in this project. Yeah, um, now Esan will talk you through the implementation details and then probably we'll see the res results again in the end. Okay, uh, hi everyone, I'm Esan uh, and I'm gonna explain how we implemented the model. So as we said before, we uh, download the data sets and uh, for the train and the validation set we can see the size of uh, the train set here before filtering, actually. Uh, so uh, the data set is constructed this way, uh, that we have a text organizer uh, that is provided uh, from uh, Hug and Face, and also the uh, image feature extractor that uh, extracts the uh, patches uh, from the image, uh, 16 by 16. Uh, patch it, uh, <coughs> and uh, does the uh, necessary transformations before fitting into the model. Uh, so all of these come from the publicly available uh, models from Hyperface. And uh, here uh, we uh, filter out all of the non yes, no questions uh, to have, an, uh, have a smaller set uh, to train on, uh, which would be uh, actually an easier uh, problem for the model uh, to solve. Um, and yes. Uh, okay, and about the model itself, uh, as I said before, we use uh, uh, these models, Albert base V2, which is the smaller, uh, the smallest size of Albert and also the smallest size of uh, the Dino uh, <clears throat> model for extracting the uh, image features. And uh, we freeze, uh, as it is written here, we freeze the parameters in these uh, two models uh, so that they're not trained with the model, uh, which uh, makes it a little bit faster for us. Um, and 
and also uh, there, uh, we have some uh, linear mapping, some uh, FCM layers uh, that uh, finally maps to the um, class space, which is um, actually one. Uh, yes. Uh, OK. Yeah, um, so this is the model itself. Uh, and uh, the only thing that one should do to make this model um, be trained in parallel, so to distribute it uh, uh, using Harvard, uh, is to do some steps. Uh, I have like four of, uh, four of them here, and these are the four more important ones. Uh, but yeah, so we use Harvard uh, for uh, distributing uh, uh, the training on multiple GPUs. It's scalable in this sense. So it's, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many GPUs we have. Uh, we, it, it does it. Uh, it still just scales it and uh, covers the models on all the GPUs and uh, um, split the data uh, so that <coughs> and, uh, and does the uh, and does the training and in the end it does the aggregation uh, of the losses and the updates. So it uh, takes care of everything here. And uh, there are some steps that I want to take, uh, including um, scaling the batch size and uh, uh, the learning rate, actually. Uh, so that depends on the uh, number of GPUs that we are using. And also uh, wrapping the um, optimizer from Torch in this uh, horrible distributed uh, optimizer uh, so that it delegates gradient computation uh, to the um, original optimizer and then does the uh, averaging and the, the reduction in the end. Um, and also uh, anything else like saving the model and uh, printing and stuff should uh, all be done on the um, worker zero. So or only one of them actually. So uh, this should be taken care of. And also the data shen, uh, that the data set must be uh, partitioned uh, among workers, which is taken care of uh, by this torch uh, distributed uh, sampler. Actually. And yes, uh, so uh, these are the information about that. We train uh, the model uh, with a batch size of 256 and a learning rate of um, this much with the atom uh, optimizer oh, sorry. And, uh, for 24 epochs. And uh, it roughly takes one hour to train the model uh, for one epoch on data bricks. So uh, it's actually much lower on a better uh, environment. And yeah, so we have uh, all the code for uh, training and the validation of the model. And uh, we use uh, the performance measure that we use as uh, actually accuracy, and we also look at the loss. Uh, so some other stuff that we could do, uh, which weren't uh, actually possible on Databricks or in this project, uh, to do some limitations, uh, we're uh, using uh, the uh, PyTorch's uh, data parallel or distributed data parallel, uh, which is very similar to what Harvard does. Uh, and also, PyTorch is fully sharded data parallel uh, um, that uh, actually um, replicates um, the model across all the workers. So it also breaks the model, uh, um, the, the model's parameters uh, between the uh, GPUs. And also, there is uh, another similar uh, tool by Hugging Face, which is called Parallel Formers. That uh, only currently only works on inference, but uh, it is very easy to use. With, uh, anyone could use it for the frozen parts of the model to uh, actually distribute the parameters of the models in case the model is um, too big. Uh, if uh, we actually used the larger sizes of these models, we could use uh, this to make things easier. <laughs> Okay, uh, the last notebook is about uh, model inference. And uh, here uh, we actually uh, 
had to read the model statistics, the uh, train accuracy and test accuracy and stuff um, from uh, the checkpoints that PyTorch uh, saves because um, on Databricks, we were unable to uh, actually uh, write uh, to a text file or append to a text file. So uh, this code here uh, uh, is actually doing that. Uh, so we get the statistics, uh, the logs uh, from the checkpoints, and uh, it is uh, plotted here. Uh, you see that the training accuracy is uh, going up, uh, but the um, validation accuracy actually um, stagnates for a while and then starts going a little bit down. Um, so <clears throat> uh, the uh, best uh, validation accuracy is 65.7% uh, and, and it, it is around, uh, uh, it's for like Epoch 13 or around there, it's more or less similar for, for all of them. And uh, yeah, so we choose Epoch 13 as our uh, best Epoch um, and continue with that. Uh, so these are uh, some code for the inference of the model. Um, and yeah, so this is a method for uh, the prediction. Uh, and um, we actually have some examples and some visualizations here. So that uh, I will uh, explain in a minute. But a, a general observation regarding the result uh, results is that the model works uh, reasonably well at answering questions related to objects in the images, which is easier to predict. Um, um, yeah, this makes sense because it's easier. And um, uh, but on the other hand, the model fails to uh, reason at a like higher order um, or uh, like uh, it doesn't have a uh, good knowledge of uh, common sense and fails to answer such questions, uh, which is a typical thing that these models and our model is uh, one of these smaller ones so, uh, is actually uh, probably the worst in uh, these regards. Uh, so uh, some examples, uh, we have, uh, for example, the, have some true positives here. For example, the question here is uh, that, is there a bicycle in this picture? And the correct answer is yes, as you can see. And the predicted predicted answer of the model is also yes, uh, but there is uh, this more difficult question as well: that uh, is there a rug in the bedroom? Uh, and the rug is not a prominent object. Actually, it's hard to see as a small object here, but uh, it might be easy to guess that yeah, there are usually rugs in bedrooms. So, um, <clears throat> and some false positives. Uh, for example, this one, uh, um, is this a Spanish town? Uh, the correct answer is no, and the predict, uh, predicted answer is yes. It's pretty hard to predict. I have no idea what the, yeah, maybe from the signs. Um, and yeah, some true negatives. Uh, is there snow on the ground? And the correct answer is no, and the predicted answer is also no. And most interestingly, there are some false negatives. For example, this one here, do children like this object? And uh, the model should rely on some common sense knowledge to answer this because not, uh, the, uh, it doesn't, it's not asking whether there is a, a teddy bear here or not. So it's asking something like cultural about that. And the model fails to uh, provide a good answer here or uh, actually, this one here, uh, uh, are some of these animals thirsty? Uh, the correct answer is yes, and the pre predicted answer by the model is no, but yeah, might be a little bit hard to answer, but yeah, we can see at least one elephant here drinking <laughs> water, or two here, actually. Yeah, okay, uh, so that was it. Uh, that was the uh, some uh, visualizations of the uh, predictions. Uh, and yeah, that was our presentations. Presentation. Thank you.